Hello guys and welcome back to Lead Logic. Today we'll be going to solve the problem minimum one bit operations to make integer zero. This is a lead code hard and the number for this is one six one two. So in this given problem we are given with an integer uh, n and we want to transform it into zero. And we can we are given with two operations which we can perform on that number. So what are the operations? Let's see. We can change the rightmost bit zeroth bit in the binary representation of n. So the zeroth bit, that is zero last bit, or if you consider it the first bit, whenever you write the binary representation, the so the bit that gives two raised to the power zero, that bit is being considered here the rightmost bit. So uh, that we can change. If it is one, we can do zero. If it is zero, we can do it one. Otherwise, we can change the ith bit where i minus one bit is set to one. And i minus two bit through zero are set to zero. So this we can do. This is the second rule which we can apply. So this this question is given lead code hard rating. But if you know a bit manipulation technique to solve this, this will be very easy for you. And I am going to tell you that technique. So stay tuned till the end of the video. So let's see through an example what the uh, Technique actually is so. The first example is given as n equal to three, and output is two. So let's see how we are going to solve for n equal to three. So the binary representation of n equal to three is actually one one. So initially we will be having the binary representation as one one. So the first uh, we will check what operation we can do. So we can perform this rule two here uh, initially because rule one doesn't apply. Uh, because of rule two does not allow uh, the rule one to be followed because the zeroth bit are set to one, so that's why we are going to use this this rule. So using this rule, we are changing the first bit of the binary representation. So the output becomes one because the binary representation become one, and then we are going to change the last remaining bit using rule one. So the output becomes zero, zero, and uh, we have transformed the entire number into uh, zero using two operations. Let's see for six as well. So for six as well, we are going to uh, initially it was given one one zero. First of all, we have uh, changed the third bit or the leftmost bit because again using rule two. So using rule two, we have changed, and uh, then the number become this zero and zero, and the output for this is two. But now again, we cannot use uh, both the rules to convert this. So what we'll do? First of all, we'll use the rule one. Change the last bit, rightmost bit, and then after that we'll use again rule two. So from here to here, rule one is used, and then from here to here, from this step to this step, rule two will be used, and this bit, the middle bit, will be changed to zero. And once it is changed, the output becomes one. So we can simply use rule one. So here, rule one is used, and the number becomes zero. Number of operations are four, and this is how we are going to solve. So let's come to the code section. But before that, do like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are new to the channel, and share it with your friends. So we are going to use bit manipulation with the recursion, and I am going to tell you how we are going to solve. So the goal is to find the minimum number of operations to transform the given integer into zero. This is our goal, and uh, each operation will be involving changing specific bit as per the given rules. So uh, let's uh, start. So if n is less than or equal to one, so what will be our step? The result is the n itself because no operations are needed in this case.
and uh, then we have to initialize a variable count equal to zero. Uh, and this count uh, and this count is uh, will be iterated till uh, to find the position of the left leftmost set bit of the binary representation so uh, let's do that also we are going to iterate it to find the leftmost set bit We have found the leftmost set bit and then we have to return simply we have to calculate the result as like this minus one minus call recursively So this is how we are going to solve. <coughs> the recursive approach ensures that we are considering all possible combinations of the operation to minimize the total number of operations. So let's talk about the time complexity as well. But before that, we have to submit and check it. So the there's an error semicolon. So the time complexity for this solution will be log in and the space complexity is also log in and how I'm going to tell you just wait so let's see you can see it is submitted and with a good run time and a good fair memory so uh, I was talking about the time complexity and space complexity so the recursive approach involves dividing the problem into sub problems at the depth of the recursion is logarithmic of n that by the Time complexity is log n and the space complexity is log n because it is determined the recursion it is recur determined by the recursion stack that's why the recursion stack can take a logarithmic of n so it is 